So we're talking today about the different organelles in cells, and we're going to talk about plastids, which are organelles that are found just in plants. Major organelles found in plants owe an algae, which are photosynthetic protists. So those are almost like primitive plants. Plastids are a specialized class of cellular organelles that they're like mitochondria. They carry their own DNA, and they're believed to be descendants of cyanobacteria. So cyano means blue-green, so blue-green bacteria, which are photosynthetic bacteria. So a chloroplast is one example of a plastid, and that's really the only one that you really, really need to know. The others, there might be one question on it, but um, chloroplasts are a big deal. <coughs> Excuse me. So some type of plastids are chloroplasts. You've probably heard of these. They're green because they have the pigment chlorophyll in them. I don't know if I spelled that right. Anyway, plast means it's an organelle, and chlorophyll is the green pigment found in chloroplast. Amyloplast, remember this, amylase. Um, this is just to help you remember. It has nothing to do with it, really. But this is an enzyme that breaks down starch. Amyloplast is a plastid, so an organelle in plants, that stores starch chromoplast colored so this one is red or purple or whatever and it helps um, make plants parts a certain color like a really red tomato or um, a pink flower so we'll look at chloroplast first so here's the cell and those little green things in there are chloroplasts and they evolved we think from bacteria so they're found only in producers um, plants and photosynthetic protists. There are producers that are bacteria, but of course bacteria do not have membrane-bound organelles, and this is indeed a membrane-bound organelle. They use energy from sunlight to make their own food. Energy from the sun is stored in the chemical bonds of sugars, so like glucose, for example. So, a sugar, so glucose is a sugar, and its formula is C6H12O6. And so these are chloroplasts found within a cell. Chloroplast structure. This I'm going to teach to you now, and then we're going to come back to it when we do the photosynthesis unit. So it's a double membrane, which gives evidence to the idea that it was once a bacteria, because here would be the original cell with the nucleus. And it's starting to take in this bacterial cell. And so a second later, it's going to look like this, and here's the bacterial cell. And then after that, it'll look like this. Pretend I'm drawing them all the same size. And here's the thing that was the cell membrane a minute ago, and here's the bacterial cell inside of it. So it's got a double membrane, and you see that here. One, two, plus this inner membrane has formed all these membranous sacs. So the sac is called the thylakoid stack. Um, so here's a thylakoid, and then a granum is a stack of thylo thylakoids. The stroma is the goop that's in here, and you have an inner membrane and an outer membrane. <coughs> so chloroplast structure, they are surrounded by a double membrane. The inner membrane is modified into sacs, and each of these sacs is a thylakoid. Thylakoids in stacks are called grana, and they're all interconnected. So you see these tubes, they actually connect one stack to another stack. Stroma is the goop, the gel-like material surrounding thylakoids. So that's like the cytosol in a cell, except this is inside an organelle. So they contain their own DNA, which makes them as cool as uh, mitochondria. They contain enzymes and pigments. The pigment, the big pigment, the major one, is chlorophyll for photosynthesis. I definitely spelled it wrong last time. It's only one L. They are never found in animal cells or bacteria. Actually, you can also add fungi to that. Never found in fungi either. Unless there's a symbiotic relationship between fungi and something else. Like, for example, lichen is a symbiotic relationship between fungi and algae. The algae would actually have um, chloroplasts in them, but the fungi itself wouldn't. <coughs> Next one, and I'm adding this one because it's part of one of the labs that we're doing. So amyloplasts, these are non-pigmented clear organelles. 
They make and store starch. They also convert this starch back to sugar when the plant needs energy. They're found mainly in fruit and in underground storage tissues like potato tubers. So this picture is taken from um, a potato. So it wouldn't be taken from the leaves of the potato. They would have chloroplasts in them, right? Because they need to do photosynthesis. But if you look at the roots, what happens is that the plant does photosynthesis and it doesn't do photosynthesis down here. So you're actually going to find zero chloroplasts down here underground, right? Here's the, the ground and here's the soil underneath and these are the roots. So they do photosynthesis and they make glucose. Yay, chloroplasts. The glucose is actually, it'll be put together um, as a disaccharide. It's going to be transported down here and then the the potato is going to grow these big tubers out of here. And the glucose monomers are going to be put together to make starch, which is a polymer, a polysaccharide. And that starch is stored in these potatoes that grow. And this is what we dig up and eat. So there's a bunch of potatoes growing on the potato plant. And if you cut this, which we're going to do in lab, if you cut that, look at it under a microscope. Here's a cell. And inside the cell are these organelles. Each of these organelles that I'm coloring in here now is an amyloplast. And inside these, you're going to have starch. So in here, you're going to have a nucleus. It's not stained here. You're going to have all the stuff, the endoplasmic reticulum, all that stuff. But mainly, you're going to have um, amyloplasts, and they store starch. Chromoplasts, chromo for color, they make and store pigments, so different colors. And that's as an attractant for pollinating um, animals, for example, insects or hummingbirds or whatever. Um, so that would be found in the flowers. Or for seed dispersal, if you're eating colored fruit. So that would be um, tomatoes or peppers or whatever. So here's a cell. And we're going to look at this in lab too. All these little tiny red circles, those are the chromoplasts. Question of the day, um, who has chloroplasts? Some bacteria, nope, because they are membrane-bound bacteria. Never, never, never have membrane-bound organelles. Plants, yes. Animals, no. Some protists, yes. And fungi, no, unless there's some symbiotic relationship. Who can do photosynthesis? Now, this is a slightly different question. Um, some bacteria can. Oops. Plants, protists, and some bacteria can. They do it without chloroplasts, so they do it just on their cell membranes, because remember a bacterium is about the same size as a chloroplast. So here's a eukaryotic cell. Um, actually, we should probably make it more square, because it's got a cell, cell wall out there, too. Whoops, that's messy. Anyway, <laughs> the chloroplast would be about the same size as the bacteria. So it's blue-green cyanobacteria that do photosynthesis, but they don't use chloroplasts. Stroma is a stack of disc-shaped compartments in a chloroplast, the thick fluid that encloses the inner chloroplast membrane, the space between the inner and outer membranes of a mitochondria, or the watery fluid enclosed by the inner membrane of a mitochondrion. And so that's the stroma is the goop, the fluid in the inner chloroplast. Mitochondria differ from chloroplasts in that mitochondria Mitochondria convert solar energy. No, 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 no. That's the job of a chloroplast. Mitochondria produce glucose. No, chloroplasts produce glucose. Mitochondria contain membrane folds called cristae. That's actually true. So that's one of the kind of nitpicky questions about the structure. Whereas chloroplasts contain disc-like vesicles in stacks called grana. Disc-like vesicles. Yeah, I'll go with that. Um, mitochondria are not found in plants, whereas chloroplasts are not found in animals. Really, really, really huge one. Important that you know that this is not true. <laughs> so mitochondria are absolutely found in plants. And um, chloroplasts, it's true. Chloroplasts are not in animals. But why would plants make sugar with their chloroplasts if they couldn't break it down with mitochondria? So it's really, really important that you know that this one's false. So the answer there is C. That's just a, a kind of a picky question about the structure. But the other, the other three, it's important that you know that they're false. So this is a big deal, and these are big deals. So you should be able to do this with process of elimination. The function of chloroplasts is um, lipid synthesis, nope. Intracellular digestion, nope. So lipid synthesis would be um, the smooth ER. Intracellular digestion, inter means within, so digesting something inside the cell. So that's the job of a lysosome. Remember, lyso to break. 
lysosome. Photosynthesis, yep, that's what a chloroplast does. Intracellular transport of proteins, I would say the rough ER does that, and the Golgi you could put there too. Cellular respiration would be the mighty mitochondria. Okay, I think I'm going to stop here.